I acknowledge that I'm speaking from unceded lands of the Wurundjeri people, and I wish to acknowledge them as traditional custodians. I'd also like to pay my respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging, and Aboriginal elders of other communities who may be with us as well. For some time now, we have been in the crosshairs of polycrisis. On some days, maybe most days, We've had our fill and cannot bear to see, hear, or think about any other potential disaster. But there is a very large looming possibility and that the fascist United States, and even if it doesn't arise, the threats that it poses to religion remain in place. While fascism is a complex topic at its dark heart is the strengthening and protection of the imagined nation above all else. This requires by its nature a large degree of othering and religious identification is an easy place to start. Hyper-individualism is the result of decades of focus on the individual as a source of value. The original intent was to create identity through consumption, but as leaderless ideologies go, individualism has crept into our minds and culture unabated. Consequently, this pattern has weakened the relevance of community from families and faith communities to schools and unions, even our local and state governance at a high cost to society. This pattern has been amplified by lives lived more online than off and concentrated even more this year by the, by the message that even the people we love can be threats or that we are a threat to them. We are now seeing a collapse of trust in almost all institutions that were previously trust bastions. And as a result, the only thing that people can seem to rely on is themselves adding fuel to this fire. Despite the ascendancy of individualism, the need for human connection and community remains urgent. And so for many, there's solace in seeking those things out online. There are many ways to connect, of course, but most turn to the reliable channels, social media, boards, and chat groups. This leads to digital tribalism, where ideas and values are not only validated, but new and damaging ones emerge and spread. This cuts across political and identity binaries, and one of the results of this is called cancel culture. And while cancel culture highlights some valid points around the power dynamics of media expression, it also has a shadow side. For some of us here today, the shadow side is nothing new. Hijabis, for example, are easy targets online and on the street because their faith is on their shoulders. In my experience, most people who have rich inner lives tend to share it, both in their, their daily activity and their digital avatars. Imagine now for a moment that a label deemed as culturally safe, Unitarian, for example, Buddhist, spiritual but not religious, suddenly isn't safe, because not because of what it is, but because of what it isn't. This is a real possibility today, and the tools that are used against people in the name of digital tribalism can be turned against any of us. Doxing pylons and other types of canceling and abuse are ripe not only for expansion, but for a darker turn. The last thing that I would ever suggest to anyone is to hide their spirituality or worse, change it in the face of a threat. Don't lose your faith, but don't hide in sacred texts either. We must raise our understanding of what is happening in our culture. Everything we love about faith has a dark mirror image in our dominant culture. And what has been lost to individualism may be swallowed by a whale that will not spit us out safe and sound. Let us remember that our values come not only from our texts, history, and communities, but from other things that we value. The First Amendment of the Constitution, for example, the supreme law of the land, guarantees freedom of religion first and foremost, but it is only through our presence, community action, that this guarantee is enforced. I would also like to highlight that the companies who profit massively from our scrolling value you as data, not as a human being. One way to keep whole in today's world is to value your privacy as much as they do, to learn and practice every day, to make that part of your practice. You are vital and so are the breadth and depth of your communities and mine and hers and theirs. No matter our practice, we all understand the golden rule. So please be mindful of the ways that individualism affects our understanding of the world and the ways that others see it. Be aware of the risks that come from digital tribalism, both what we do and what we receive. 
and let us be vigilant together in protecting each other. Thank you very much.